that patrol. <laughs> gentlemen and welcome to Matamida, Minnesota for tonight's broadcast of girls basketball. I believe we will get it in a moment. There we go. Tonight's broadcast of girls basketball between the Matamida Zephyrs and the East Ridge Raptors. I am David Schuyler, sports producer at Suburban Community Channels, talking to myself by myself tonight. Arlen Becker filling in for me at the director's station. Unfortunately, we had a little mix up with our announcer, but that is okay, because we will still be able to bring you Metro East basketball action and Eastridge coming out of the suburban East. A little bit about these two teams. Uh, both of them had good starts to the season. Uh, Matamidai beating Chisago Lakes last week by a score of 56 to 30. And Eastridge also started the season with a win over Hastings. But that one was a little bit closer, 59 to 56. But nonetheless, a pair of undefeated teams at the very beginning of the season. And here we go, getting right into tip off. Number 34 for Eastridge, Britt Carlson. And number 23 for Matamida, Greta Shim Shimnowski. I apologize if I got that wrong. And here we go. We are underway. Number three, Zoe Centers dishes it out to Ella Hronsky. Over to Sel Selman. I believe that's Selman. Drive-in is denied by the big number 34, Britt Carlson. Boy, she's going to be a force in the center of the floor for East Ridge. Standing at a court, standing at 6'4", according to Basketball Hub. 6'4", rather tall for a, just a sophomore of East Ridge. Three-pointer for Eastridge is no good, but the putback by number 14, Ella Stegeman, is good. So Eastridge takes an early 2-0 lead. Matamine now who takes a deep three, and that one is no good. That from number 10, Ella Hronsky. Eastridge driving the lane now. Nup takes the foul. She is smacked on the play, and Eastridge will retain possession. Number 14, Stegeman for the inbound. Carlson now dishes it out. Back over to Stegman. Inside. Oh, and that is rejected. Big block there from Matamidi. Dishes down the guard right back. Lots of fast pace action to kick things off here. Nup now brings it down. She is slowed down by centers. Dishes over to Carlson. Over to the corner. Back down to the middle. Right back to Carlson. She goes up and gets the two-handed jumper right on the inside. So four quick points for the Raptors. And a turnover here for the Zephyrs. Three-pointer from outside from Stegeman is good. And a quick timeout to Matamidi. Easters jumps out to a quick 7-0 lead after two quick buckets on the inside. And then Stegeman from the outside, number 14. There in the huddle, you see Matamidi's head coach, Erica Zizzo. She addresses the start, probably just trying to calm down her players a little bit. Uh, because it was a really fast-paced, exciting start. I'm guessing that they were not quite ready for, so just slowing things down a little bit. And over on the other side, Glenn Worm for East Ridge in the, well, rather fitting East Ridge colored shirt with the tie as well. It is a very good turnout at the game here tonight. Lots of fans, lots of students from Matamidi. And we are back underway. Centers brings the ball down court for Matamidi. 
And she breaks a defender's ankles and steps back for the three. Apologize for the volume there. That was a very nice move from centers as back down on the other side. Stegeman looks for the answer and she gets it. So Matamidi with a three, Eastridge answers right back and we have some back and forth action here. Centers dishes it over to Washington and now it's worked down low by number four, Selman and Selman almost got the roll but didn't quite get it. So it's not the and one, but she will get two shots here at the free throw line. Solomon, one of the returning leaders, actually the returning points leader for the Zephyrs, as she gets the first one to drop. She led the team last year with 297 points, about 13 and a half points per game. Looking to reproduce that this season, if not do even better, and she gets the second one to drop as well, so Matamita has cut the lead in half now. Nup brings the ball up floor, defended there by Hronsky, dishes over to Bennett, and the pass is too high, looking for Carlson underneath, I believe it was, but it's a little bit too high and goes out of bounds, so Matamita will inbound and take it back the other way with centers coming down the floor. Deep three there from Washington is no good. Washington, just a freshman on this lineup, surprisingly. You don't frequently see a lot of freshmen dressing up for varsity, but she was able to produce in the first game for the Zephyrs, their season opener against Chicago Lakes as she put up 11 points in that game, was one of the co-leaders, as this one is dished down low from Carlson. Carlson, the jumper is no good. Back down the floor quickly is number four. And Stallman, and she gets it to drop. Stal or Stallman, I apologize. Stallman with the quick bucket for Matamida, and it's a 10-7 game. Burns headed at the top. Now Carlson, now over to Stegeman. Stegeman with the three. No good, rims out, but the rebound from Big Carlson. No good, gets her own rebound again. Looks for an outlet. Jump ball called. Rather surprisingly, jump ball. The referee, very clear with the call that both players had contact. So we get a jump ball. Possession goes to Matamida. That was interesting. I thought we might get a foul call. I thought I had heard a slap. But apparently, that was simply the sound of the ball. And I was, I apologize, it was actually, the referee corrected just about everybody here. Uh, it was actually Easter's possession. A travel called on Carlson, so I mean, I will get it right back anyways. You just saw a second ago, the last time these two teams played was a year ago to kick off the season, and that one was a nail biter as Eastridge won 38 to 37. Big three by Salman drops. Matamidi ties things up. They have gone on quite a bit of a run now. As Eastridge had the lead, I believe it was 10 to two. And Matamidi has called right back. Stegman now to the outside, over to Nup, over to Carlson at the top of the key. Works it around the outside. Great defense here from Matamita to keep him out. I think they're going to give up that three all day. Three does not go. Rebounded by Burns. Dishes out to Nup. And as Nup drives the lane, she is fouled. I did not catch the number of the player that laid the foul. I believe it might have been Salmon. Correction on that. I believe it was Cummins it lit up on the board that had checked into the game that picked up her first foul on the play. First free throw does drop. Easters takes the lead. Second one drops as well, bounces in. So Nup 
picks up two points and gives Eastridge the lead right back. Washington now working around the outside of the lane, drives in, shoots it over the big Carlson, and she gets it to go. Adamita ties it right back up. Burns over to Nup. Nup works it out on the outside. Over to Stegeman. Stegeman looking for the shot, doesn't have it, dishes it back over to Christensen who had checked in. Christensen did not get it to go. Washington back on the other side for the Zephyrus. Dishes it over to Underwood. Underwood does not get it to go. Rebound quickly. Back under the hoop, Underwood. Second chance, doesn't go. Rebounded by Burns. Timeout taken by Eastridge. So everybody gets a chance to catch their breath. Thank you, Eastridge, for taking a timeout because this has been very back and forth. Oofza. As I mentioned, very loud in here, very nice turnout. Uh, no lack of excitement for this game. Matamidae's girls team, I think, has a lot of excitement going into this season. Uh, as we take a look at the Metro East standings from last year, I believe they're ready to build off of this. Nothing to be upset about at all, finishing fourth place in a very tough conference uh, with a six and eight record, nine and 16 over. Not quite what they wanted, but still, uh, something to build off of. And they brought back most of the pieces from that team going into this season as they returned most of the top scorers. Salman came back from last season. She led the team in points, as I mentioned. Underwood was right behind her. She comes back this year. Last year, Anna Rainey as well, who we have not seen in the game yet. Correction checks in now to the game. Anna Rainey was also one of the leading scorers last year, 188 points, 7.8 points per game. So they have a lot of pieces, it's all there. And they're looking forward to a chance at a good season. They definitely started things off strong with a throbbing, 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 drumming, pick your word, of Chisago Lakes. And looking to avenge last year's loss to the Raptors here. As Carlson has it as the top of the key, dishes it around to number 20, Bennett, who had checked back into the game. Burns drives in, goes up for the jumper, no good. Gets her own rebound, goes up and is fouled. Hard foul there as she hit the floor, so Burns will go to the line and shoot two. Burns gets the first one to drop as the students tried to sway her with what appeared to be animal noises, I can only assume. Kind of sounded like it. Second one drops as well. The Eastridge back out in front by two. This game, very close. The biggest margin has been Eastridge by eight as the three ball goes up from Underwood, but that does not go. And then there is a foul on the inside. Not a shooting foul on the play. So Matamidae will have the chance to inbound. Cummins will inbound from the baseline. She dishes it in. Washington got it at the top of the key now. Drives in, goes up with the left, gets it to go, and one. Strong move there from Washington. Certainly no easy task at all driving into the center of the lane against this East Ridge, East Ridge team as between Carlson and Burns. Carlson six foot four, Burns six foot one. And Washington stared them both down, drove in and put up the left-handed jumper. Or left-handed layup, I suppose. And now Matamida has their first lead. Matamida fans wanted a turnover there but I think the ref called that. It was ripped out uh, by number 10, Pronsky. Apologize if I'm not getting that right. S 
Stegeman. Nope, apologize, Nup with the three from the top of the key. Puts Eastridge back in front by two points. Matamide looks for an answer. Travel is called on Fronsky. So Washington checks out of the game and Cummins also checks out of the game. So now on the floor for Matamida, we have centers, Underwood, Washington, Rainey, and Shimnowski. Skips. No, I'm not going to get that right. I hope she gets a lot of points, obviously. Matamida Pro Broadcast. But I apologize to my ju jump ball called here between Carlson and Underwood. Great defense there to not get called for the foul and get the jump ball awarded. Matamidai possession, as Eastridge got it last time. Now possession switches over to Matamidai. Strong defensive play there. See, my last name is Skyler, also spelled S-C-H. And number 23 from Matamidai, Greta. It's spelled S-C-H, so I want to go with Ska because of my own name, but people have told me my own last name is very strange and I get a lot of shuz. So I'm not quite sure if it's Shim, Shimnowski or Skimnowski. Skimnowski. Shimnowski. Anyways, back to the action. Fronsky is fouled as she drives in and tries to put up the right-handed layup, so she will go to the line for two free throws. First foul on Eastridge's Stegeman, who has been a force for the Raptors. Already with eight points. But picks up her first foul. The first free throw for Fronsky drops. as Salman checks back into the game for the Zephyrs. And the second one drops. So we have a tie game, almost 10, almost to the halfway point. Tied up here. Lots of back and forth action. Top of the key, shot, no good. And Matamide brings it back down the floor. Underwood, Underwood left alone. Gets the three to drop. Underwood picking up her first three points of the game. Right back down the floor, comes up for Eastridge. Just is it out to Stegeman. Stegeman drives the lane, puts up the jumper. No good, rebound. Matamide centers back down the floor. Moves down the left side, looks for an outlet, finds it. Just is it out to the three. Gets it to drop Bronski. Bronski with the three. Matamide now leads by six points. And they have got they have found themselves on a bit of a tear. A little too close there was centers with the defense on Nup. So Bronski. Correction, centers. Centers, Bronski nailed the three. Eastridge comes back down the floor and then centers picks up her first foul. Nope, now looking to drive the lane, dishes it out to Christensen. Christensen dishes inside to Carlson. Carlson trying to work around two Matamida defenders and a foul is called on Skimnowski. That's what I'm going with, Skimnowski. Skim that's what I'm going with, Skimnowski. I'll have to ask my camera guy, who's right next to me at halftime, how he would say it. But I'm going with Skimnowski. Foul on the floor is called. Not immediately, picks up their third team foul. That is the second foul on centers. Checking back in for Matamida is Washington and Cummins. Carlson working on the inside. Jump ball is called. Great work there for Matamida to get another jump ball. That's the third jump ball thus far. Eastridge definitely making use of the inside. It was actually Burns on the drive there, not Carlson, my mistake. Carlson now with the ball, dishes it out. At the top of the key, it's Nup. 
travel. Traveling is called a nup. And the Matamidi fans love it. Turnover for the Zephyrs. Unfortunately, I do not have a mark of how many turnovers, but it seems that their defense has been very good with all the jump balls and takeaways that they've had. Washington at the top of the key, jukes her defender, tries to go in for the layup, is denied by the rim. Back down the floor, it's Stegeman outside. Three is blocked, picked up by Burns, dished out to Stegeman. Back inside to Burns. Burns goes up with the left, gets it to go. Just a little bit of a height advantage over Washington. Back down the floor comes Salmon. Looks for an outlet, finds it. Three is put up. No good. Underwood. Eastridge with a three shot of their own, and that one drops for Stegman. Selman back down the floor. We are now to a one point game. Selman goes up and is fouled hard. Nope, picks up the foul there. That is her first foul. Correction, second foul. The scoreboard updated almost immediately after I had said it. Salman looking to add to her seven points. Does, misses the first, but she'll get another opportunity. Stegeman already with 11 points for East Ridge. Salman is leading the Zephyrs with her seven. And the only other player on the floor with points for Matamide right now is Washington. 13 points between the two of them. There's a steal from Matamida. Is Cummins. She looked to drive the lane, decided against it. Went out, dished it back inside. And we have a push called on Anna Rainey. Couldn't quite tell who got the push. I believe it was Christensen. Kind of hard to tell from this vantage point, but that's what it looked like. And Selman gets the two-pointer to go. Pushes the Matamidi lead up to four points. Eastridge works it inside to Burns, and Burns gets the another left-handed layup to go. And the points just got added to Matamidi for some reason on the scoreboard. That's not accurate. Something. The score is not correct right now. Somebody's got to tell the uh, scoreboard operator. Um, because two points went to Mott. Yeah, now they're fixing it. There we go. I was way too hung up on that. Eastridge now working around the outside. Three is put up from Emily Christensen. The freshman gets it to fall. Eastridge back out in front. Those are her three first three points of the game. Salman now with the jumper looking for her three of her own. And she answers for her 13th points of the game. Matamidai. Out in front, 29-27, seven minutes to go. Eastridge now with their spread out offense. Blocking foul, blocking foul, interestingly enough, called on Burns as she pleads her case. I don't think she's gonna change the referee's mind from what I've seen in my day. Pleading your case doesn't usually work out. Doesn't usually get the ref to change their minds, but nonetheless, blocking foul called. Matamidi gets possession. Wide open three for Hronsky. She misses it. Three back out is blocked by Carlson, and Eastridge gets possession as they work it down the floor. Stegeman goes up the right side, switches over to the left. Christensen over to Burns. She goes in, does not get it to fall, but she will shoot two. That foul on Matamidai's Skimnowski.
First one does not fall for Burns. Second one is nothing but net, so we are within a one point game. Salman brings it down the floor. Works out to the right side, dishes it over to Skimnowski. And I believe a travel is called? Yes, a travel was called. So a turnover here for the Zephyrs. Skimnowski checks out of the game. Burns on the inside, tosses it in to Carlson. Carlson works it back out to the top. Dished now over to number 20, Bennett. Bennett working around the right side. Dishes to Christensen. Christensen over to Stegeman. Back inside to Burns. Triple teamed back, leaves the three wide open, and she nails it. Bennett with the wide open three. That's the thing. With Carlson pulling that much attention from a triple team on the inside as Salman has an air ball here. Carlson pulls a triple team on the inside. All she has to do is dish it back up to the top all day. There were two people who had wide open shots and there was absolutely no mistake there as Eastridge, East Ridge jumps back out in front. Carlson inside to Burns, that was offensive foul called. I was going to say that was quite the shove. Burns pleading her case again. Thought she was simply using her body to get, uh, to box out the defender. But nonetheless, a push is called and Matamide takes a timeout. So with 5.21 remaining here in the first half, Eastridge holding on to a slim 31-29 lead, but it has been very back and forth. There's been runs for Ronamidae, there's been runs for Eastridge. We've had a little bit of everything in this first half. There's been a lot of three-pointers, there's been shots on the inside, uh, left-handed layups, right-handed layups, points coming from everywhere. So Matamidae, this season is looking to do a little bit of a rebound as we take a look at the Suburban East standings from last year, the way Eastridge finish out. They too are looking to rebound a little bit as they were towards the bottom of the conference. 4 and 12 overall in conference, 9 and 17 overall. But the thing about the Suburban East Conference, from what I've heard uh, from listening to Mike Peden and Ted LaRue and from coverage of White Bear Lake sports that we have done here at SEC, uh, Stillwater is very, very, very good. There's just no two ways about it. Uh, and a lot of the other teams in the conference also very formidable as the three ball gets put up from Washington. And she picks up her eighth points of the game to put Matamidai back out in front. I will finish my point about the Suburban East Conference later as Salman works it down the left side, dishes it out top to Fronsky. Fronsky does not get the three to go. Rebound by knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Eastridge Carlson. And Matamidai will look to inbound, dishes it all the way up top to Salman. Salman now with the three pointer, does not go. It did hit the net but unfortunately didn't go through the top part of the rim. So it's out of bounds, but the Zephyrs do retain their one point lead. So not too much hurt. So as they can put up a defensive stand here. Eastridge now works it inside Carlson. Great defense there from Underwood for the Zephyrs. Washington with a pull up three from outside and she gets it to go. Extends the Zephyr lead. Washington giving her 11th points of the game as the student section tries to get things going here. Drives the lane for Eastridge, no good. And they will keep possession as the ball was last touched there by Matamide Sronsky. Matamide centers, checks back into the game. Uh, 
it was Cummins that she that checked out for her. Washington drives, misses the layup, can't get it to go. Rebound goes to East Ridge's Christensen. Working on the left now, Christensen gets it back. Misses the three, can't get it to go. Rebound burns, puts it up, and she gets it to drop. Back to a two-point game. Centers takes over the ball handling duties. Thought about going right, decides against it, comes back to the top of the key. It works out brilliant, brilliantly for her, gets it to drop. Three points for centers, pushes the Matamia lead up to five now. I believe their biggest lead of the game. Though I could be wrong, I've lost track from all the back and forth action. Nup looked to drive in, but was fouled. Foul on the floor called. On uh, Rainey, picks up her second foul. Washington checks out for the Zephyrs. For Eastridge. First one drops. Nup is the player at the line shooting. Both teams are in the bonus now, so fouls on the floor will result in free throws, and she gets the second one to drop. Rainey now works down the floor, crosses over her defender, dishes out, wide open travel will be called on Fronsky. She had the wide open three, decided against it as the defender ran out, tried to work around her. As suddenly there is more light in here. That was interesting enough. Trying to change the pace of the game, possibly. In any case, back to the action. Great turnover here from Matamida. It works down the floor. That is Rainey working it on the inside. Rainey can't get it to go. Rebound for Eastridge Burns. Nup works it down the floor. Decides to go left. Not surprising, as it's practically been a feature. Looks to the inside, nothing doing there. Gets it back around, gets it back on the inside. Bennett goes up for the layup and is hammered on the shot. She will go to the line for two, with a chance to cut the lead down to one point. First one drops. for Bennett. That is her fourth point of the game. Also with two fouls, as she can't get the second one to go. Rebounded there by Hronsky. Hronsky works it down the floor, goes off to the right. Nothing going. Dishes it out to the left to Underwood. Underwood makes a spin move in the lane, drives in, working on Carlson. Can't get it to go, rims out. Rebound, Matamidai. Over to Skimnowski. Skimnowski back in the game. Can't get it to go. Eastridge picks up the rebound. And we are back down at the Mount Amidi end of the floor. Eastridge on the offense. Tries to work it inside. Nothing going there. Back outside. Over to Bennett. Bennett gets it to go. Eastridge jumps back out in front by one point. Seven points now for Bennett. Shove called there as Underwood tried to drive the lane. Three substitutions coming in now for the Zephyrs as Salmon, Salmon, Washington, and Cummins all check back into the game. And going out is Centers, Rainey, and I did not catch the last one. Apologies for that, but on the floor now for the Zephyrs. Fronsky, Underwood, Cummins, Washington, and Skimnowski as they push the lead back out to one. After the free throws go, Eastridge now works it into the middle. It is stolen away there, nothing doing. The middle defense has been good for the Zephyrs. Jump ball is called. Great defense there from Washington. 
Matamide retains possession. Selman will check the ball in to Cummins. Kind of surprising, honestly, that the defense for the Zephyrs has been so good. They've managed to keep Carlson to only four points. Burns not on the floor at the moment. Hold that thought. Three-pointer, Zephyrs back up to four. Washington adds to her total. Keeps things rolling for the Zephyrs. She's now up to 14. Top of the key, dish down inside to Carlson. Dish back outside. She drew a lot of attention. Three-pointer put up by Stegeman is no good. Stegeman gone a little cold recently. Matamida with a three. They answer. They are feeling it. Washington is on fire. Eastridge right back down the floor. Works it inside. Carlson, no good. Two defenders on her. Couldn't get it to go. Almost got her own rebound, but the ball was knocked out by Matamida. Eastridge retains possession. Ball will be checked in here by Bennett. Hofta. Absolutely explosive first half here from both teams as Nup can't get the layup to go. Matamidai had a look at the three, decided against it, works it inside. Nothing doing there. Rebound from Matamidai. Goes out to Washington. Washington, she's been feeling it, puts up the three. She is fouled hard on the shot, couldn't get it to go, but she will shoot three from the line. Washington doing it all for the Zephyrs right now. 17 points already to her name at the line with an opportunity to shoot three points, can push the lead up to 10. And we are not even to halftime. I am literally on the edge of my seat. Washington gets the first one to go. Already besting her point totals from the first game of the season. She had 11 points in that game, now with 18 to her name. And she adds her 19th point. Just a reminder, Washington is a freshman. And she is one of the reasons Matamidai is excited for this season. Because when you add numbers like this, as she gets the third one to drop, the lead is up to 10. When you get numbers like this from a freshman, on top of all the returning point scores you had from last season, there is reason to be looking forward to this season. 10 seconds remaining in the half, nine seconds, and... The ball was knocked out by Matamidai Fronsky. Easters will check it in and likely set up for one final shot just before halftime. Looking inside, nothing doing there. Checking it out way down time. The three is good for Stegeman. So, Eastridge at last he for Washington is no good. Way off the mark. Wasn't even close, but she's smiling about it because it was a three quarters shot. But there you have it. Back and forth action. We are only at halftime. This has been crazy. Eastridge, great end of the half there as they managed to uh, pull within seven. But I have a feeling we are set up for an incredibly exciting second half. Quick recap of the points before we go to break. Washington for the Zephyrs has 20, and the leader for Eastridge is Stegeman with 14. We will be back in a moment here on SEC. Dad, they took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Dad! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. you now and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org caregiving. 
Some kids never smile. They're embarrassed by their crooked teeth. They want braces like the other kids, but their families can't afford them. Some may even try to straighten their teeth themselves. That can make everything worse. Luckily, there's Donated Orthodontic Services, a program from the American Association of Orthodontists. It helps provide orthodontic treatment to kids and teens whose families can't afford it. For kids who apply, are approved, and are matched with a volunteer orthodontist, it can be life-changing. Their treatment is in the hands of an expert, a licensed local orthodontic specialist who improves their smiles by correctly aligning teeth and jaws. Some kids think they'll never smile again, but donated orthodontic services may help them smile with confidence. To link to the application and eligibility requirements, visit aaoinfo.org. Hi, I'm Ice-T. As a veteran, I know that for many former servicemen and women, the battle doesn't always end when they come home. Every day, 184 veterans are diagnosed with post-traumatic stress, and sadly, 20 take their own lives. When nothing else helps, professionally trained service dogs can. American Humane, serving the U.S. military for over 100 years, rescues animals in need of forever homes, and trains them to become free, life-saving service dogs for our nation's veterans. If you're a veteran or know a veteran struggling with post-traumatic stress or traumatic brain injury, please go to AmericanHumane.org to learn about their Pups for Patriots program. Let's give our veterans a fighting chance. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Welcome back to our coverage of Matamida Girls Basketball. I am David Schuyler, joining you for the rest of the evening here at SCC. Behind the camera there is Kenny. We got Anders up on camera. We got Richard on our game camera. SCC Sports bringing you Matamida Girls Basketball all season long, along with the various other sports. Boys hockey in action tonight for Matamida. We also had coverage of White Bear Lake Sports last season. Uh, coming up soon, we also have White Bear Lake against Matamida Girls Basketball. We got all sorts of stuff, great stuff for you all season long here on SCC. Right now, this has been quite the game. No two ways about it. Matamida leads by seven at the half. Their biggest lead, I believe, was eight points. I apologize, I hadn't been writing it down along as we go. A full recap of the points for the game. For Eastridge, Stegeman has 14 points, one foul. Nup has seven points, two fouls. Uh, Carlson has four points, two fouls. And Christensen has three points, no fouls. On the other side for Matamidi, Salmon has 13 points, no fouls. Fransky has five points, no fouls. Underwood has five points, one foul. Cummins has zero points, one foul, and Washington doing a little bit of carrying the team on her back, had 20 points in the first half, and one foul to her name. Those are the players that were on the floor at the end of the half, and we get things underway now for the second half. Eastridge starts with the ball. They work it outside to the top of the key. Carlson back inside to Burns. They get her back in the game, and she, her layup attempt is no good, so Matamidi brings it down the floor quickly with a three attempt from Washington, that is no good. Eastridge with the rebound. Carlson dishes it out to Nup, and she brings it back down. Eastridge now works it around the outside, back up to the top, Burns. Gets it over to Stegman. Stegman gets it to Nup. Nup works it back up to the top of the key. 
go, tried to go right, didn't like it, what she saw, went back left, gets it back over, down inside to Carlson, swift defense there from Washington. Carlson gets it right back, dishes it over to Burns, Burns puts it up, no good, gets it back, puts it up again, and she is fouled. Two or three opportunities there for Eastridge, none of them could drop. But Burns does pick up the foul. She already has seven points on the night. And we'll look to add to that. She also has two fouls. A little bit of foul trouble going on for Eastridge. As Burns can't get the first one to go. And what I mean there is Bennett already has three fouls for Eastridge, and three players have two fouls. That is Nup, Carlson, and Burns all with two fouls. And on the other side, there's only two players with two fouls for Matamida. Second one is no good either, so Matamida will take over, retaining their seven-point lead. Moving down the floor on this brisk November evening. We're hoping you are all staying warm and dry. Apparently, there's a blizzard on the way. I'm more of a I'll believe it when I see it kind of person. But nonetheless, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the flaky white pottery stuff that we Minnesotans have come to know and love so much. Inbound now, and Nup works it down the floor for Eastridge. Things have slowed down a little bit. The pace isn't quite as back and forth. Early possession of the second half dominated by Eastridge here, but no points to show for it yet. I jinxed it pretty darn hard as Carlson works it on the inside and puts it up for two more points. Matamidi back down the floor. Hronsky puts up a three, gets it to go. And just like that, Matamidi now with the eight point lead here early in the second half. Carlson gets on the inside, mishandles it, can't keep it inbounds, and turnover. As mentioned before, I don't have complete track of all the stats like turnovers, rebounds, field goal, percentage, free throw, percentage, et cetera, et cetera, but I wish I did because it seems like Matamidi has had a lot of turnovers go their way. Fronsky now gets it on the right side, thinks about the shot, double clutched it, rethought it, put it up, why not? Fronsky getting on the board here with a number of points, pushes the lead out to 11 with her 11th points of the game. Top of the key now, Burns works it out. Over to Nup, Nup. Back up top. That three-pointer, no good from Bennett. And a shove is called on Stegeman for Eastridge. That is her second foul. First team foul of the half as those reset for the half. But nonetheless, two fouls for her now. And Matamida gets possession, even more important. Salman now works it outside. Working down along the baseline is Skimnowski. Skimnowski can't get it to go. And there were four Eastridge defenders there, so they come away with the ball, not surprisingly. Nup over to Burns. Burns thinks about it, waits for things to develop, gets it back over to Nup, and Nup gets the easy lay-in. Not quite sure what happened there, but Christensen took a hard fall for Eastridge. And the ball could not be saved. Valiant effort there from Carlson, but it's not saved. So Matamidi will retain possession. Hanging on to a nine point lead. Still plenty of time left to be played. 14.49 here, Salmon will look to inbound. Can't find anybody, gets it in. Great dish to Washington. Washington lays it in. A great inbound play there set up by Matamidi and head coach Erica Zizzo. A great steal opportunity there from Washington. Didn't quite get it. Eastridge gets it right back. Working around the outside now. Christensen goes left, goes back to the right. At the top of the key now, it's Stegeman. Stegeman works it all the way around the left side, works it inside, puts it up, gets it to go, and one. Stegeman, look, Stegeman looking to add to her 14 points she already has. 
16, as it were, after that bucket. And Underwood picks up her second foul for Montevideo. Washington checks out. Selman checks out. And coming in for the Zephyrs is Cummins. Underwood will look to inbound to her. Also on the floor, Pronsky, Anna Rainey, and Washington. Washington gets it at the top, drives in, dishes it back out to Underwood, can't get the three to go. Rebound Eastridge, we get a jump ball. Carlson is not happy about the jump ball. Apparently she thought she had the rebound. She thought she had possession and was fouled. But nonetheless, Matamida comes away with the ball. A little bit of a height differential here on the inbound. Does not matter. Washington with the air ball. And that time Carlson gets the foul called. So Underwood with the foul. That's her third. A little bit of trouble now on her part. We'll have to be careful going forward. And Nup will work it down the floor for the Raptors. Thought about going right, changes her mind, goes left. Nup working it around. She come and snuck around for the quick defensive play. Picks up the foul. She thought it was all ball. The ref thought differently, calls the foul. That is the second there on Cummins. Cummins doesn't have the point totals. As Burns there picks up two more points for the Raptors. Doesn't have the point totals. Uh, the big flashy point totals. As Fronsky gets a three to go for Matamidai. But Cummins has been everywhere on the floor tonight. Definitely a key factor in the defensive scheme for the Zephyrs and has been dishing a lot of passes well, picking up a bunch of assists, I'm sure. Eastridge now, as Cummins takes a hard fall, right after I say that, in the middle, might have been shoved, did not get a call. The three is put up by Stegeman, can't get it to go, bounces out, Matamidai will get possession. Nine point lead now for the Zephyrs, 60-51, 13 minutes left in the second half. Anna Rainey tried to drive in, but was denied by Eastridge. Eastridge now works it outside, looks to get a little something going, but they can't. Christensen with the three that does not go. Back down the floor now. Washington has it, hesitates, drives, puts up the left-handed layup, and one gets it to go. Washington cannot be stopped tonight. 24 points for the freshman. And a timeout is called by Eastridge, 62-51. After the timeout, we'll be getting a free throw from Washington. So as I was saying earlier regarding the Suburban East, never got the chance to finish my point because things got so back and forth. It's a very good conference. Stillwater, probably the obvious top. I have Mike Peden to thank for that information. He mentioned it in our last broadcast with White Bear Lake uh, and Elk River. And I definitely have no reason to doubt him, as he certainly knows when to, what he's talking about. And Mike, and I would say Ted LaRue, he and Mike are the leading authorities in Stillwater basketball. As we take a look at Matamidai's upcoming schedule, December 3rd, St. Anthony, December 10th, versus St. Croix Lutheran, my alma mater. Also, a section opponent, so that is just as important as conference matchups. So that'll be a big one. Fridley, Edison, and then later on on the 19th is another one we have highlighted as the Zephyrs will travel to White Bear Lake to take on their neighbors in the Battle of the Lake girls basketball rendition. Very much a lot of basketball left to be played. They'll be going all the way through the month of February. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the Zephyrs make a run at all this year. If they can ha keep having runs from Washington, and you see there on your screen as she puts up her free throw and gets it to fall. If they keep getting runs and point totals from Washington, from their leading returning juniors and seniors, 
this will be a very good team. They finished nine and six, nine and sixteen, excuse me, last season, which got them the seven seed in sections. As Carlson puts up another two points. But before that, if you go back the past two years, Matamide was the number one seed in both of those seasons. As Fronsky drives the lane, puts up the right-handed layup, and gets it to go. 12-point lead now for Matamide. So in 2016, 2017, Matamide finished 22 and three, earned the number one seed. 2017, 2018, they finished 23 and two. So this team is definitely familiar with success. And I think last season, a little bit of a rebuilding season for the Zephyrs. And that's why they didn't quite have the win total. They didn't get uh, double digits even last year. They didn't get to the 20s. But certainly could and look to again this year. And I believe they have the pieces to do just that. Inbound here for Easter's goes haywire. And Anna Rainey is able to scoop up the loose ball easily and go down for the easy left hand to lay up the lead. Definitely now the biggest of the night for the Zephyrs. It is up to 14, 67 to 53. Christensen now works it outside. Three point attempt from Stegman is good. Stegman with 14 points in the first half, already six to her name in the second half and Eastridge chunks back just a little bit into that Matamidi lead. And Arani now works it inside. A nice underhanded layup with the right hand. Gets it to go. Stared Carlson right in the face. Said, I am not afraid of you. All six foot four of you. Puts it up with the right hand. Gets it to go. Zephyrs now with the 13 point lead. Good defense there from Matamidi. It's really been quite the balanced attack from Matamida in this game as Washington checks out. You've seen obviously high point totals as last year the game finished 38 to 37. We're already past two times that. 38 times two is seven. Okay, we're not past two times that, but we're well past 38 to 39 and we're well on our way to two times that. So not only the high point totals for Matamida and Eastridge, but Matamidi has been very good on the defensive side as well, limiting some of the key players for Eastridge to lower point totals. As players like Burns has nine points, Christensen has three points. As a foul is called here on Underwood, she picks up her fourth, definitely in foul trouble now. As she has four, Cummins has three for the Zephyrs. Bennett gets that one to drop. Checking back into the game for the Zephyrs. Actually, for the first time, is Layla Guile. Sophomore forward, getting her first action of the game. That one falls for Bennett. Back to an 11-point game. Salman now works it down the floor, goes out to the left. Thought about shooting, decided against it, comes back to the right. Dishes out to Rainey. Rainey back over to Cummins. Cummins to Skimnowski. Over to Guile, and how about that? Welcome to the game, Layla Guile. A very difficult contestant shot, puts it up, gets it to go. Zephyrs extend their lead. Eastridge now. The Raptors nup, working it outside. Back over to Bennett. Bennett underneath the hoop, tries to get the reverse to go, can't do so. And the ball knocked out, last touch by Matamidi. Centers now checks back into the game. Cummins checking out for the Zephyrs. And Erica Zizzo has got to be really happy with her team's performance thus far. Obviously still a lot of ball left to be played. We still have almost 10 minutes remaining in the half. Oh, correction on my what I said before. The referee must have changed his mind about the possession there as Matamida comes away with it. And Arani drives the lane, puts up the right-handed, right-handed left side layup. Can't get it to go, but is fouled on the play. Will go to the line to shoot two. 
Christensen picks up her second foul. Rainey can't get the first one to go. She has four points on the night. But she does get the second one to go. Stegeman checks back in for the Raptors. Burns inbounds. And Nup takes it down the floor. Over to Stegman. Stegman on the inside. Trying to open things up a little bit. Can't get it to go. That was blocked. And Guile comes away with it. Over to Centers. Centers gets it to Salmon. Salmon works it down the right side, back to the left. Drives the lane. Puts up the left handed layup. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by Eastridge. Christensen gets it. Over to Nup. And Nup works it down the floor. Slows things down as head coach Glenn Worm calls a play for the Raptors. Nup now works it back outside. Stegeman's got it. Dishes to Burns. Kind of interesting to see her so high up on the play. But Eastridge content to work the outside. Can't get the three to go. Rebound was picked up by Burns, and she is fouled on the play by Guile. That is her first foul. Team has seven for the half. So Eastridge is in the bonus and will shoot free throws. Burns at the line. You look at Eastridge the past five seasons as well. Last season, as mentioned, nine and 17 in the conference as the one and one, the first one drops. Nine and 17 in the conference. Interestingly enough, the season before that, 2017, 2018, they did not win a single game. Finished 0 and 26. So, bef and before that, 19 and seven. And the year before that, they were 20 and six. 2015, 2016, they finished the year 20 and six. So a little bit of a roller coaster here for the Raptors. And if they keep following the trend, they went 20 and six, then 19 and seven. 0 and 26 was rock bottom. Can't. I mean, just to put it plain and simply, can't go any farther down than not winning a single game. But then they picked it back up last year with 9 and 17, and they're looking to build on that again this year, and quite possibly have the pieces to do so. Salman now takes the dish, works around the outside, puts the right hand away, can't get it to go, burns with the rebound as she gets the ball out. That was an interesting play. Down the floor, Christensen puts out the left-handed layup, gets it to go. But as mentioned, turning things around in the Suburban East Conference, not the easiest thing to do because they're gonna have to face some stiff competition. All the teams that finished ahead of them last year, three teams with 20 wins. As Centers gets the three ball to go. Stillwater Forest, like Roseville, all finishing with 20 plus wins in the conference. So those will be formidable opponents in the Suburban East. As Stegeman drove the lane and was fouled. She will go to the line. Stegeman with 20 points already. Looking to add to that. On the other side, Centers picks up her third foul. A little bit of trouble for the Zephyrs. Salman checks out of the game. Fronsky comes back in for the Zephyrs. Burns goes out for Eastridge. And will catch a breather. Nup comes back in for her. I do believe that was who came in. Carlson is also back in for the Raptors. Jump ball called off the shot. Eastridge retains possession. Carlson now off the inbound, works it to the top. Gets it to Bennett. Bennett over to Stegman, puts up the three, gets it to go. Stegman is definitely Miss Unstoppable for Eastridge tonight. On the other side, it's Washington for sure. She's taking a breather. Guile drives the lane. 
can't get her jumper to go. The segment has 23 points for the Raptors, which leads the team by a far margin. The next closest is nine points. They just haven't quite been able to put the defense together with the point totals. As Nup drove the lane, put up the shot, couldn't get it to go, bounced out of bounds. Three players now checking in for the Zephyrs. Cummins comes back into the game. Salman also coming back into the game, along with Kayla Meslo. Number five for the Zephyr, Zephyrs, her first action of the evening. 10 point lead now for Matamida, 6.27 to play. The ball's worked inside. Big test there for Rainey. Picks up the foul on Carlson. Can hardly blame her. Can't really do much there. Although they have done a decent amount keeping Carlson in check. Carlson last season was averaging only 6.2 points per game. According to Minnesota Girls Basketball Hub, she gets her first one to drop and gets the second one as well. So the lead is now down to eight points. So she's looking to build off of that experience this season. Had 124 points for the Raptors last year. In the first game of the season, though, she put up 10 points. So besting her average, and she's right on that pace tonight as well. Christensen was fouled on the play. She will go to the line, and Eastrich chipping away at this lead, making things interesting here with six minutes to go. A chance, as the first one does drop, a chance to cut this lead down to six points. It was all the way up to 13 at one point. 14, I do believe, actually, now that I think about it. And the second one does go. So Christensen, now with seven points on the night. And the timeout is called by Matamida, Erica Zizzo. Looking for her team to catch a breather. Notices that Eastridge has gone on a bit of a run. Needs to slow things down a little bit. And they will do just that. Folks, you can always check us out on social media when you're not watching our games. Facebook, we have SCC TV over on Twitter, SCC TV Sports, where we will post highlights from games. We'll have uh, upcoming games that are announced. We'll have replays of games that get up on our YouTube page you see there, SCC TV, and of course on Instagram. So head on over, follow us on Twitter for all things SCC. And you will know when we are going to be broadcasting, when we'll be live, when we'll have past games. And of course, you can catch all the action from earlier in the season over on our YouTube channel. Always tons of exciting stuff going on on our YouTube page. Earlier this year, we had the incredibly exciting, in my opinion, in lots of people's opinions, incredibly exciting football section championship between Tartan and this Matamida Zephyrs team, or well, the Matamida Zephyrs football team. Uh, came down to the wire. Tartan missed the two-point conversion. Matamidi won, ended up going to state with a five and six record, I believe they had at the time. And if you'd like more on that, it is over on our YouTube page. Definitely worth the watch. Matamidi now works it to the outside. Salman gets to the top of the key. Hronsky puts up the three. Doesn't quite get it to go. Out of the timeout. That was a good drawn up play. Had the wide open look for Hanski, but didn't quite get it to drop. Eastridge now working it around the outside. Christensen dishes it over to Bennett. Bennett back over to Nup. Back to Christensen. Back over to Nup. Nup tries to drive the lane. Nup and go in there. And she travels. Another turnover for the Zephyrs. Checking into the game for the Zephyrs now. We got Washington. Uh, we got 
number three centers. And number 10, Fronsky was already in the game. She wasn't checking in. Oh, apologies, it was Anna Rainey checking back in. Centers, put the ball on the right side, dishes it back at the top to Washington. Washington drives the lane, puts up the lit, and gets the jumper to go. Washington adds to her point total, pushes the lead back out to eight points for the Zephyrs. That is the play right there. When things are not quite going your way, get your playmaker back into the game, get the ball in her hands, and she makes things happen for the Zephyrs, pushing the lead back out with four and a half to play. 277-69. Carlson tries to work the inside, but she is denied by Horonsky, and then Horonsky gets fouled by Carlson. Carlson with her third foul. That is Eastridge's fourth foul of the half. So no bonus yet, Washington. Dishes it over to Underwood. Underwood works it at the top of the key. Gets it back to Washington. Drives the lane. Had it stripped. Was knocked out by Burns last. Matamidi retains possession. A lot of fans not happy with that call on the East Ridge side of things. Rainey will inbound for the Zephyrs. Looks up to Fronsky. Fronsky drives the lane, puts up the strong right, can't get it to go. Carlson on the defense. Eastridge back down the floor. Christensen puts up the three, gets it to go. The lead is five points. Eastridge back within five. Matamita has been leading ever since three or four minutes left in the first half. Eastridge has been chipping ever since. Matamita has gotten the lead further. Eastridge has come clawing back, and now they are only within five points. As you see, Glenn Worm there in the huddle telling his players that they're at a good spot. Probably not exactly where they want to be, but I have to imagine his plan was to get that three to go to then set things up for a defensive play. We'll see what they do here. On the other side, Erica Zizzo. Probably happy with how things have gone thus far, but knows that the momentum has swung a little bit in East Ridge's favor. Washington comes back out on the floor for the Zephyrs. And in my opinion, I think they just gotta get the ball in her hands and good things will happen. She's been able to drive the lane with three, four defenders in front of her. She's been able to shoot the ball outside. She's been able to shoot the jumper. She's gotten the layup. She's gotten everything. 27 points for Washington. Washington now drives the lane, as I mentioned, puts up the jumper, gets it to go. She cannot seem to miss, has Burns, six foot one, all of Burns up in her face, does not care, puts up the shot, gets it to go. And the lead is back to seven points for the Zephyrs. The Raptors now. Carlson. Over to Stegman. Stegman back to Carlson. Tips off her hands, goes out of bounds, and Matamidi gets the ball as Carlson was the last one to touch it. Centers will bring the ball down the floor. Three minutes and counting now. Getting to be a little bit of crunch time. Although in the game of basketball, three minutes can certainly last a lot longer than you would think. Washington, the top of the key. Gets it down inside to Hronsky. Hronsky puts up the reverse layup, can't get it to go. Boy, that was pretty looking, but didn't quite get it to fall. Nup now works it down the floor. The five starters for the Eastridge back in the game all at the same time have been on the floor for most of the game. Washington down the floor quickly. Two defenders interface, dishes it out to Rainey. Rainey puts it up, can't get it to go. Rebound, Burns. Eastridge will work it back on the floor. 2.30 and counting. Carlson puts up the jumper, gets it to go. The lead is back to five. The lane left nearly wide open for center. She takes it all the way down the right side, puts it up, and it's fouled on the play by Carlson. She'll get an and one. 
Centers goes to the line for the Zephyrs. As can't quite see the number, Selman checks back into the game. Coach Zizzo probably trying to get her defensive side of the things on the floor a little bit. As the free throw is no good. And up now with the ball, Carlson looking for it. She gets it, turns around, dishes inside to Burns. And Burns gets the left-handed shot to go. Also gets the and one. Eastridge's strategy all game has been to dish to the inside, and you can't blame them for the size differential that there is. Monomita has just been able to keep them in check just enough. As the free throw goes, and now it's a four-point lead for the Zephyrs. Eastridge will do the, four the full court press. With under two minutes remaining, Salman doesn't like what she sees. Waits for things to open up a little bit. Pronsky now. Works it to the right side. Goes back over to Underwood. Underwood. Dishes it out to centers. And then Coach Zizzo doesn't quite like what she sees. Calls a timeout. Interesting thing about a high school basketball here is with the lack of a shot clock, Eastridge has to pressure, flat out. I mean, when Sanders got the ball there, she stood and stared the defender in the face, almost as if she was daring her to come and take the ball away, or at least pressure. And Eastridge has no choice but to do that, with only a minute 30 remaining down by four points. Now, this is not by any stretch of the imagination over, not even close. I mean, I think it was uh, Tracy McGrady, wasn't it? Who back for the Rockets back in the day? I unfortunately I wish I had a color commentary guy who could uh, who could weigh in on this. But I believe Tracy McGrady scored something like nine points or something like that in a span of ten seconds or something crazy like that. I remember seeing it many many years ago. So this game four points, a minute thirty, tons of time. Doesn't take long for a play to get set up. But Matamirai looking to, st to stay undefeated on the season and hand Eastridge their first loss. Fronsky will inbound. Gives it back to Centers. Centers charges down the floor to make sure to get over the line, to not have a time violation there. Gets it over to Salman. Salman pressured there by Christensen. Gets it over to Underwood. Underwood goes left, comes back to the right. Looking for Hronsky, got nothing there. Gets it inside to Washington. Washington, ball goes bounced off of her foot and Eastridge takes possession. So, Stegeman will inbound. Matamidi now with the pressure. Gotta make a stop. Things could get tight. Nup works the ball down the floor. Gets it inside to Carlson. Carlson outside, tries to get it to Stegman. And she fumbled the ball on the play. Turnover, Matamida gets the ball under a minute to go. Great defense there from Matamida when it matters. Fronsky now will inbound, looking for an open player. Can't find one, gets it in. Carlson knocked the ball out, so we work about six inches further down the line. Fronsky now will try to inbound again, gets it into Salman. Salman pressured there, gets fouled. Christensen with the foul on the play. She still has fouls to give, only has two in the game. Carlson with four fouls, so she is not able to give one. Six fouls now for Eastridge, so they still have fouls to give before they're even in the bonus. Konski working the ball down the floor, crosses over, gets fouled. I believe it was Burns who gave the foul. She still only has two, so that is her third. And if the scoreboard will update, correction on that. It was Nup of the Raptors who picked up the foul. So that is the seventh for the Raptors, so now Matamida is in the bonus, and Hronsky will go to the line. 
as she drains the first, picks up her 17th point of the game. And a chance to extend the lead to six. Still, two possession game, 50 seconds to go. Eastridge working the ball down the floor, pressured hard. Uh, there's a hurt Zephyr in the middle of the floor. I was really confused for a second there. Washington is the player that is down on the floor. That is not what you like to see, but she's also smiling. I believe she might have rolled her ankle as she limps off the floor. I didn't, I didn't quite catch what happened there. All of a sudden, she was just, as you see the numbers there, 11 points in the win versus Chisago, Chisago Lakes last week. Trying to walk it off in the corner. I will keep you updated on that as I can. 43 seconds to play here, and Matamide loses arguably their best player. That could be key for the Zephyrs down the stretch. Centers now with the ball. Ball gets knocked out of her hands, picked up by Hronsky. Matamida can't work it down the floor. And they ran out of time. Ran out of time, 10 second violation on the Zephyrs, so Eastridge will get possession. It's a two score game with 30 seconds to go. If I were Eastridge on this play, I would, on this play specifically, I would take the time to set things up and get a good shot. You don't need a three. You don't need a three on this possession. You don't need anything super quick. You still got 30 seconds and you can play defense. You got a few players you can give a foul. Three throws aren't the end of the world because it'll keep it close. I would take five-ish seconds to set up a play and get a shot off. And that's exactly what they do. Working in quick shot from Stegeman. Great setup play there with the screen. Great setup play, and it killed exactly five seconds. So now they are only down by two. But Matamida with the lead. Washington still in the corner, trying to work off her injury, talking to the trainer, pleading her case. Seems like she wants to get back into the game. Walking. Ah, she's thinking about walking over. And she does. Unclear if she will go back into the game or not, but she's at least coming over to support her teammates. That would be huge for the Zephyrs to get back. It's only a two-point game. Eastridge had us, or Eastridge was down by as much as 14. The Zephyrs with the lead. I keep talking about Eastridge because they are the ones who need to claw back into this game. But do not take any credit away from Matamide. Their play has been fantastic tonight, both ends of the court. It's been a very high scoring affair. And it's just been down the stretch here. Eastridge has finally found a rhythm. They have found what's been working for them and stuck to it, made it work, and they've gotten all the way back within two points. Still Matamide though, they come out with centers, Salman, Pronsky, Underwood and Rainey. Eastridge counters with Stegman, Bennett, Nup, Carlson, and Burns. Salman now gets another floor, right to the middle. No interest in a shot whatsoever. Hronsky, they're just playing keep away. Over to Salman. Eastridge has to do something, and they're fouled. That was a great game of keep away there from Matamidi. They had the ball right in the basket. Had absolutely no interest in shooting whatsoever. Salvin goes to line, and this is big. This is big. She gets two shots. If she knocks down both, it's a two-possession game. If she misses either of them, it stays a one-possession game. Yeah! Salmon drains the first. Ice in her veins. Now with the chance to push the lead to four in a two possession game, more importantly. She does just that. No hesitation at all. No distraction. 
as Easters now needs to work quickly, run out of time really fast, only eight seconds left, puts up the three, no good, can't get it to go, rebound, Burns puts it up, can't get it to go, tries again, can't get it to go again, a third try, can't get it, Matamidai hangs on, comes away with the four point win, 84 to 80 over the Raptors of East Ridge, what a game, my goodness gracious. That was intense. The Matamidae picks up their second win of the season. Real quick recap of the game for you. We want to get out of here quickly so everybody can get home safely from the blizzard, but real quick recap. Washington was unstoppable for the Zephyrs. Put up, I believe, 27 points on the game, not on the board, unfortunately, right now. Left with an injury, but we think she's okay because she was smiling about it. On the other side, it was Stegman for Eastridge that put up 26 points. A real solid game from her, just not quite enough as the Zephyrs win 84 to 80. A huge win for them, taking down Suburban East Foe, East Ridge, R Suburban East Foe, the East Ridge Raptors. Whoa! Finally have a chance to catch my breath. That was so back and forth. It felt like the second half was a little slower paced than the first half, but things back and forth nonetheless as our scoreboard updates because of the scoreboard here in the gym. Folks are ready to get out of here. Thank you to everybody for helping out tonight. Our crew, Arlen, for stepping in for me and directing tonight. Kenny, Anders, and Richard on cameras. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everybody.